often give this question to my students at the very start of the year and I put it up there because it's a parabola, it's something that's familiar that we've been looking at for a number of years now. And I ask them whether this rule here produces a positive parabola or a negative parabola. It certainly sparks a bit of debate. Well, the short answer is that it produces a positive parabola, although intuitively it looks like it's going to be negative because of the sign in front of the X in the brackets there. So the next logical question is, well, why? Why is this going to create a positive parabola? Well, what we're going to do is use some of our index laws to pull this uh, rule apart. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, fix up or change really that negative in front of the x so that it looks a little bit more familiar. So by pulling out negative 1 as a common factor, that's going to change the sign of the 3 and the x. So using this index law that I've written here on the right there, what I can do is apply that to these two parts that are being multiplied together that are all to the power of 2. So what I end up with is negative 1 squared and then negative 3 plus x all squared. So what happens to that negative 1? Well that just becomes positive 1. And then this negative 3 plus x I can write as negative 3 plus x all squared and that plus 1 just dangles on the end there. By tidying this up, I make it look a little bit more familiar and hey presto, we have a rule that creates a positive parabola that has been translated three units to the right and one unit up. Now although you'll never be asked a question such as is this going to create a positive or a negative parabola, certainly those skills that we've just applied there of pulling a, an equation apart and putting it back together again is something that method students certainly need to be able to do. Try not to fall into the trap of just assuming that it doesn't matter whatever the sign is in the bracket here because it's always going to create a positive rule. Check out this example here of a cubic where I've got 3 minus x all to the power of 3. Does this create a positive cubic or a negative cubic? Well let's apply the same method that we just did over here on the left hand side to this problem here on the right hand side. What really bothers us here is this minus x. What's, what's going on here? Is it going to make it positive or negative? Well let's remove that negative and pull it out the front there as a common factor and again apply our, our index law and you'll see that in this case the negative one remains a negative one and I've just switched those around so it does look a little bit more familiar. So in this case where the negative sits inside the bracket it does create a negative cubic. So you just want to be careful there and make sure that you understand the inherent algebra that's going on behind the scenes that creates either a positive shaped graph or a negative shaped graph.